Alright, everyone, Fuse Man Kamnacha, and today here to build super hot VR, and we're in mixed reality, so all of, all of the fanciness right here, and we got Hassan, and he needs a Everybody. nickname. I we got I don't Smiler. Need, I don't need a nickname. He needs but you can a nickname. <laughs> nicknames if he needs you're interested. a nickname. <laughs> we got Smiler. Put put stuff in the chat. I want to see more ideas, and we have Dario here today, who brought in this fancy guy. The toy. The toy. So we'll play around with that a little bit later, and uh, yeah, uh, Dario's on the research team at HTC, and he can explain a bit more about what he does. So I'm um, the developer relations team, uh, developer but I work closely with the research R&D team, yeah. uh, the Vive software team with the plugins. Uh, I'm really excited about the tracker, I think everyone <laughs> is. Uh, so yep. I'm going to go step by step on how to actually put it in your game, uh, yep. and I think it's going to really open up a lot of possibilities. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so so we we see it at a thousand. Uh, I'm sorry you guys didn't get one. <laughs> well, no, it, was, it was a lot of demand, and uh, hopefully we'll have other rounds. Cool. But the, the good thing is, uh, you can actually pre-order it for hundred dollars starting March 27th. Nice. Cool. And yeah. a month. <laughs> and for anyone out there that's wondering, these things are really light. Like that's something that I was wondering about. Like how heavy would this be? Um, but the form factor is really awesome. Super easy to just probably attach to something and then get started with. Yeah, um, so we'll definitely we'll play around with this probably in the second half of the stream. Uh, get it set up. Uh, Daria provided us with a model because <laughs> the current model that's that's working with HTC is a uh, it's a little wacky. <laughs> not gonna lie, um, but it works. So yeah, we'll play around with that later. And for now, you wanna hop into yeah, let's do it to the good old mixed reality. Uh, yeah, I didn't set it up perfectly, but. It works. So, so yeah. So basically, uh, there, there you go. There was a rocket that just flew by you. Basically, um, all this is is we're in space, and there are a bunch of rockets that keep spawning and <laughs> flying past us. <laughs> I've added in a, a little cool particle effect for the fire to to fly by us. And as he moves his controllers, as he moves his head, uh, you basically it speeds and speeds up and slows down time. Yeah. So if he doesn't move at all. So time only moves when you move. We can show it with the... Uh, oh, there's one. All right. Also, the sun is a good example. Yeah. So right now it's not moving. I'm going to get out of the way of the sun. <laughs> you see that? So yeah, as he moves really fast, things like fly by. I didn't calibrate it super well. Um, as you might have known, if you follow us on Twitter, I was at GDC the whole week. So this kind of came together last minute. And then it just oh, flies by you. Uh, that was actually a really good effect. It just went... Meow. Yeah, so if he swings it, like, it's going to sl slowly move time. Yep. <laughs> and things, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I still had a lot of fun yesterday putting this together. And, um, yeah, we're going to build this. It's going to be, it's not that much code. So, really excited to, to play around with this with you guys. Yeah, and major shout out to the Super Hot team for coming up with this. It's an awesome mechanic. Yeah. Um, there's, I was actually, so I, I came up with another cool mechanic. We'll do this probably in a later stream. So I was watching a trailer for Breath of the Wild. Uh -huh. And so there's this cube, or I guess the, Link has this power up where he, he can slow, he can stop time. Mm -hmm. And then all the punches he puts uh, accumulates a force that then gets applied to an object. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I, I was like, wait. That would be a really cool mechanic so to play with. There's another thing we need to do, which is that in, I think it's X-Men, maybe Days of Future Past or something, but there's the Quicksilver scene where he stops time and he's like going through the kitchen oh, and like redirecting bullets yeah. and stuff. We got to do something like <laughs> we that. Might, we might be able to play around with this um, a little there. bit later. I'll, I'll toss in BRTK um, and then we can like try to redirect stuff as they're moving. But... Yeah, a lot of cool stuff that you can do with time, and super excited. And with that, yeah, this is the Unity project, and we can dive into actually building this thing. Um, I'll also put a shout out to all of the links to everything we're going to use is in the description below. We're actually, I joined the Unity affiliate program, which I think is just kind of cool way to like keep track of like if if you actually really don't know too much about it, other than that like. If it's like a referral system, and so if you click the links below, that I think um, just helps us out a little bit um, as far as uh, Unity giving us a percentage back of free assets. Which <laughs> now that I say that doesn't make any sense at all, but that's what, what that's what's happening with the links below. 
so with that, I'm just going to close Unity. And that was the Mixed Reality build. That is our Downloads folder. And let's just get started. Why do I have Unity 5? All right, I'm on Unity 5.1. I don't know why 5.0 is still there. Start with a new project. Let's call this Slow Time Live Stream. And yeah, actually, so there's a lot of setup right now. And God, so much stuff happened at GDC. We should talk about that <laughs> while that setup is happening. It's, it's basically me downloading all the links that are below. So I'm going to go to the asset store real fast, and uh, we'll talk about it. So you, Hassan, you are you are on the floor for just Thursday, right? Uh, yeah, I think a little on Wednesday, but mostly Thursday. Did you try anything cool? Uh, didn't actually try out that many demos. I just think that a lot of the news came <laughs> really awesome. But you talked about you tried the um the eye tracking. Yeah, I tried um I can never remember the name of this thing. <laughs> I feel bad. Uh, Tobio, to Toby, yeah. Toby. I thought there was an O in there, or maybe it might be not. Okay, Toby. All right, I tried the Toby. They, so they have two eye tracking solutions. One is a infrared sensor that's like on your computer or laptop. And so that works with the PC for a 2D screen. And then in a back booth, they also had this really cool VR headset with eye trackers built in on the Vive. Yes, it was on the Vive. And that worked really well they had a mirror demo it was a bunch of tech demos so one was a mirror demo where like you just you move your head and then you can see your eyes move and then they have another one another one where it's like a bunch of drones flying through the air like going left and right and so they shoot at you you grab the orb and then you just look with your eyes and release and that just i think simplifies the process really much of like aiming and all of that stuff the other ones were some UI demos, and I don't remember the last one. Those weren't as impressive, but um, yeah, still I think those two two demos really sold me on it. Like eye tracking will be a thing. I I initially thought eye tracking was only going to be for foveated rendering, but there there's some cool input stuff you can do as well. All right, the other thing I wanted was vast outer space because I like that scene. And this one's a bigger down demo or download. Well, we'll let it go. I got a rocket ship, which was I was like I was surprised that that model was free on the asset store. I think that was really cool. And then there was one more, which is the particle text, which is a I I think it's a pretty much a Unity essential. Like it works with five five. So if you don't have that version, I don't think it works. I think the reason they use it is because it has 5.5 introduced a lighting module to particle systems, which um, allows the actual particles to emit light and kind of make the scene look a bit better. Um, yeah, so I'm going to use that. I think this is actually the first. So I've used this asset a lot. It's actually one of my favorites on the asset store. But I don't think I've used it in the stream before, partly because it's so big. But I think it looks... If you haven't tried this asset out, I think it's a really, really cool asset. You, you've you seen the outer space one, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. This one's pretty cool. It's just, it's nice for just level building. It's yeah. Pretty wild stuff in there. Also, um, one thing that I saw at uh, GDC was I met the person that built text mesh. For, text mesh oh, for yeah. Me, and it's free now. So that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've, I've seen, I think, Eddie. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie, uh, I saw on Facebook, you um made a video i think you want to post in the chat i think you have admin access to yeah, post links yeah uh yeah look for or if eddie eddie posts it because i think yeah, he's, he's here in the chat here. So yeah just yeah let's have him post it. yeah um eddie post post your video in the chat um because i've i didn't get a chance to watch it but i know that you were playing around with tech me text mesh pro so uh, I think that's probably a great resource. We might we might incorporate that in future streams. I think it's a really cool asset that's not free. Um, yeah, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I got a <laughs> I got Unity certified, and unfortunately, it's it's killing killing the bottom part with the green screen, but that's okay. So that that was super fun. Uh, or I don't know if fun's the right word, but uh, exciting exciting is the better word. <laughs> it was it was something, <laughs> and, and that happened. Wow, this asset's taking a long time. But yeah, um, they were they were in SF. Well, Unity is based out of SF, so uh, yeah, I was. They were certifying throughout GDC. Happened to go by, 
it was kind of expensive, 250 bucks to get certified, which was, <laughs> I was like, what? But done. I am certified for two years, whatever that really means, we're going to figure it out. But I think it means I can use, I can start using their logo on stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. And um, hopefully more collaboration with them in the future, because I, I, don't, I don't know if you guys know, but I kind of like Unity a lot. <laughs> Just a little bit. All right, last asset here while we are, I'm um, yeah, unfortunately, th this this is the part that just takes a long time, but <laughs> hopefully, yeah, and then we can get to the fun stuff. And this is, yeah, this this is the one that requires 5.5. Five. Um, you can see here that it does, but I, I think it's made by Unity, so of course it kind of has to look good, and it's pretty pretty straightforward to use, so... <coughs> Yeah, that that's that. What else did I do at GDC? I met a, I tried out a lot of cool headsets. Uh, I tried out the Pico AK headset, and we might be able to get a video on that in the future, which I was really excited about. Same with the Pmax 4K headset. I didn't try the 8K version, but um, hopefully try to get that on stream as well, because that one... So the Pico is 8K with like a 200 degree field of view, maybe a little more. They have a Kickstarter, which I don't actually know where it is. I couldn't find the link, but I, I think that was cool. And then they have, and then the Pico has six off tracking with 4K. Um, both are standalone headsets, and they work. They work pretty well. Um, nothing like the Vive, um, <laughs> as far as like um, just tracking fidelity, but still really, really cool. All right, so. Now, now that I've talked forever, and we finally have all the assets we need, so let's uh, let's play around with time scale. I mean, that's what you guys all came for. So to start off, I'm going to first set the scene up uh, with Steam VR. Drag in our camera rig. Go to the inspector. Set this to zero zero zero, and get rid of the main camera. Save the scene because I just want to make sure we do. Uh, this is just going to be our test scene. So I want to show you what we're playing with, and then we'll, we'll write the scripts to make it work. Next thing I want to do is 3D object plane. And that one's already at 0, 0, 0, so that's cool. So um, that's kind of the, just the basic setup. And I'm also going to do a cube, toss this in the air, and we'll add a rigid body with gravity. Save that. And so that's just the normal, just really simple scene, standard time scale and everything like that. And it just kind of falls. Now, what I want to show is if you go to edit and you go to, where is it? Project settings. There is a setting for time. Now, it's, it's a very few set of settings, but this is basically what we'll be using as far as incorporating the time scale. So you can see how much time it takes for every fixed step, and that's for mainly for physics. It's uh, maximum allowed time step, so how much time, and time step here is really the time in between frames in seconds. No, in milliseconds, in milliseconds. Um, and then you also have a particle time step, and all of those are actually controlled by the time scale. And actually, let me just pull up, it's probably better for me to time scale. Just pull up the the time settings. So I mean, this is all in the Unity engine. So you got the delta time, um, you've got time scale, um, frame count, fixed time. Um, so yeah, you can read all about that here on if you just go to the docs and then here are all the time properties. But this is really what we get to manipulate as far as actually controlling time. So with that, what I'm going to do is cut the time scale by a tenth. When I hit play, you'll see that the cubes is now falling super slow. It's still, uh, at all of the time properties as far as like rigid body and gravity, all of that's calculated the same and it's the same acceleration and everything like that. We just slowed down time. Now, that applies to anything that uses time.delta time, time dot time, time dot, you name it. So everything is just moving a tenth slower, but uh, tracking purposes, so we have, you can see that doesn't slow down our, our translations and rotations of the headset. 
that um, those get applied the same. Um, and the reason for that is that's not using time dot delta time or anything like that. Those are like instantaneous. This frame, I want the position and rotation of the headset to be at this location. So that's the key difference. But physics, animation, particles, maybe something else that I'm forgetting. A bunch of other things. Anything that uses ta the time system will actually be slowed. And that's that's what we're going to take advantage of. And if I remember correctly, Super Hot was actually built um, in a hackathon. And this is exactly, I think, for Unity, I think this is exactly how they actually manipulated time. So it's a, like it's a really simple thing to do, but it, it, it allows you to build a world of different mechanics. And that's that's a really cool part here. Oh, playing around with the tracker. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Well, Hassan is uh, working on uh, what, what we can do to extend this. I think that'll be fun. So, yeah. So, we got the, the, the non-coding version of Superhot set up. Let's actually get in. Uh, obviously, Superhot depends on your input. It's, it's time only moves when you move. So, we have to incorporate what is the velocity of our controllers, what's the velocity of our headset, and using that to basically manipulate time. So what I'm going to do is actually go into the vast outer space scene, the example scene, and demo scene D. And before this kills my computer, I'm going to get rid of Asteroid Dense B. So Asteroid Dense B is actually, so when you hit play, and I'm not going to do this here because it actually <laughs> will might kill my computer. Um, in this scene, there's a, there's a dense cloud of asteroids with some high-ish high poly asteroids in there, and you'll get an FPS around 20, maybe less, which, you, as you might know, doesn't really work well with Steam, <laughs> Steam VR or any VR headset for that matter, so we're just going to get rid of that because, yeah, I kind of want a higher FPS. And once you do, everything else is pretty optimized, so just keep that in mind. Once we do that, I'm just going to drag in the Steam VR camera rig into the scene, put it at 000, just because I can. And with that, we should be pretty much set um, as far as enabling VR with the controllers. And now we can start having a little fun. So uh, actually in the scene, I don't know if I, I kind of pointed this out at the beginning in Mixed Reality, but this uh, the sun here actually has a particle effect, I believe. Yeah particle effect here that uh, controls that that fiery area over here. So uh, we'll basically, we can use that to test before we add the rockets in and make sure that our time scale is working the way we want it to. Um, I'm actually, I just realized I totally left the time scale at point 0.1. I'm going to put it back to 1 just so uh, it moves a little bit faster. But yeah, now, now you can kind of see it clearly in the scene view. So, with that set up, I'm going to go ahead and create our first script, which is controltime.cs. No, that's JavaScript. I fail. Well, I'm going to delete it once Visual Studio opens because I don't like writing in JavaScript. <laughs> I like the typed, I, th I think a lot of people like the typing of C Sharp and some of the, some of the other stuff uh, that C Sharp provides. Let's go ahead and delete that and create. C sharp script, control time. And actually, I'm going to open the chat because the sun is not here right now. It chat is here. Um, what's happening in the chat? Uh, yeah, C sharp. Okay, cool. I can jump in. Go ham. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. That, great. Reload everything. We don't need the JS version. Cool. So for this, we're going to have a lot of public variables here. So public, Steam, VR, tracked, controller, headset. Uh, then we're going to do left and right hand for the AE. Copy, paste that. I actually found a kind of, did you know this? Um, you can make private variables um, public in the inspector. Yeah, serialized fields. Yeah, I was like... I, I only figured that out recently. I was like, what? <laughs> That's like, that makes coding so much cleaner. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do it now because we don't <laughs> we don't have to, but I was just like, 
That's a pretty cool tip. Slash, I might, I might post that on Twitter one of these days. You can keep private things private, but still have the editor. Yeah. Capabilities. Um. Agreed. <laughs> it's it's so much nicer. So just creating all of the variables we need. Uh, pre. So basically, we need to keep track of the velocity of the controllers. Um, which means getting access to our, our actual controls, which is the headset left and right hand, and then also getting access to the pat the the state in the previous um, frame, so that we can calculate the the delta time that uh, elapsed between the two frames. So. Uh, let's go ahead, so prev left, and then prev private, vector 3, prev right. And uh, we'll just set those right now. Uh, we'll actually create a, 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 a method for this. So set um, prev state. So this is prev headset equals headset dot transform dot position. Uh, prev left or pre yeah prev left equals left dot transform dot position and prev right equals right dot transform dot position. So we're gonna we're gonna do that in both start and we're gonna do that in update. So we just wanna and that that has to be the last thing that we do. And the reason we do it in start also is because we we need to initialize our, our previous states to wherever the initial position of our headset left and right are. So this is really this is gonna be the key line. I'm just gonna write it right now. Um, we're gonna update one f to be whatever one f needs to be. That is based on the velocity. But uh, once we manipulate the time scale, that will slow down and speed things up. So that Really, if, if there was one thing you took away from this whole live stream, it's going to be this line <laughs> right here. It's This is what will do all of the magic work that you needed to do. And you can manipulate it in whatever way you want. So we're going to manipulate it so that it's based on how much you move, but you can do this based on how much you rotate, how much you... Um, how much you whatever <laughs> whatever you feel like, you can you can do that here. So next, so this is based on how much you move. So to calculate how much you move, we need to calculate the velocity. For that, what I'm going to do is uh, head velocity is going to be the headset dot transform dot position minus prev headset, and now we'll just copy and paste that for all three of our controls. So head left is going to be left and right. And I forgot one thing, which is I need to divide all of these. Actually, no, I don't. Sorry. I don't want to divide all of these because um, that would mess things up. <laughs> um, I So normally when you calculate the velocity, you do it divided by time dot delta time. But since we're manipulating the time scale, that's just going to warp all of our velocities because time dot delta time will be constantly changing uh, based on the time scale. Um, so you can keep them absent since you know it's basically whatever that position is. Um, you can keep it kind of absolute, which works out. And these are not by headset dot transform. This is by uh, left. This is by prev left. This is right. This is prev right. Okay, so that's that's all the the relative velocity changes, and then let's get an absolute value or. or Basically, so this is going to be float uh, total move or total total velocity, and so for this, what we're going to do is just headset dot magnitude, not menu press heads head head bell. If I could ever type one of these days, I'll learn to type magnitude, and then left bell magnitude plus right. Magnitude. Now the neat part about this is you can actually scale these however you want. So if you want to exaggerate uh, the velocity for your head movements, you could um, you could make multiply this, for example, by like 1.5 f. There we go. 
And then you could maybe maybe you want to de-emphasize the hand movement. So maybe it's a uh, point point at F, and same with the right because let's keep it consistent. Uh, symmetry is kind of a nice property. And so you could do something like this to um, make something more exaggerated, something less exaggerated. For example, um, if we want to add the control, uh, the track uh, puck in here, we could we could add that in and then give it a, its own velocity. So uh, we have options, which is kind of cool. And now, um, one thing I do want to do, because otherwise you'll lose control <laughs> of your simulation really fast, is also create a float, which is going to be the cap velocity. And I'm going to keep that as 0.1f, um, which is kind of what I was experimenting around with a little bit. Um, this is a, a control for you to uh, control how much um, movement uh, speeds and slows up your your simulation. And then I also want to add in this one, I'll just make it a const, um, is min, min velocity, and this one's going to be 0 0.01, or sorry, min speed, not or min scale, rather. And that's just going to be the minimum scale that you want. You actually, so no movement, you actually don't want to keep it really close to zero. The reason for that is actually more, um, it's more an issue actually of uh, Steam, the, the Steam renderer actually uses uh, the time when it's rendering out your controller, uh, which um, I, or it might be more because like it, for that switch from start to update. Regardless, um, I haven't actually dug into the code, but having this min scale will make sure make sure your your controller is initialized. So that's that it's that's the main reason we're adding it in. But um, otherwise, you wouldn't really have to. So I'm going to set the min scale here, and then I'm going to say it's going to be total total velocity divided by the cap velocity plus min scale. So at minimum, uh, we're going to move 0 0.1 uh, 0.01. F, so if that's literally if nothing was moving and we had a zero velocity in every section, that would do it. Uh, otherwise, um, we, it's based on however much we move. So that's that's basically really all of the code that we need to, to make this happen. Now at this point, we can jump into Unity. And actually, I'm just going to do a little bit of organization. So first, get rid of the main camera. Second, uh, create at zero, zero, zero. I want to if I could ever we go and we'll just create a environment empty game object select all of this stuff move it under there just so we can keep clear of it and then we're just gonna add another empty at zero 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 and call this time control and add our script onto it so we have that set up here just drag the left I mean, actually, it doesn't really matter where you... Oh, I added stuck. You should actually supposed to be a trapped object. That's a fail. So, note to self. All right, tracked object for all three. Uh, track controller is, I think, different. So just save the scene, let it compile. There we go. Set to tracked object. So, left goes to left. Right goes to right. And head goes to head. All right, so with that, hopefully, uh, I'm actually going to unplug our mixed reality camera. And let's turn controllers on. Let's pull you up. Might actually already be able to see it. Um, so that's, uh, you can see there, it's like, I don't even know if it's moving. But like you can see now, as I like move it around, it starts to, to speed up the, the sun animation. If I if I let it go, it doesn't do anything. So I should wanna So like yeah, so if I like move, it moves a lot. What's this controller? I'm missing it. Which is bizarre, but that's Oh. It's because the track puck is where's the puck? The puck behind the computer. I turn it off. It thinks it's a controller. <laughs> oh, turn the puck off. Yeah, I got it. Oh, wait, it is off. And why does it? Interesting. 
Okay. Oh, all right. I can let me restart Steam VR. That's probably that is probably the problem right there. We'll play with the puck later. And I, I initialized yeah. it to start with. That was that was and my And while bad. we're working on that in the chat, uh, definitely post your ideas of what we should attach the puck to. We're looking <laughs> around the SVVR office right now and trying to find some some good matches. So the more ideas, the better. Yeah, I was I was thinking baseball bat, but I don't think we have a baseball bat. <laughs> Um, all right, with that should be good to go. Yeah, I think. No, why? Why are you missing? Hello. What does it think is connected? Let's try this again. I don't know why it's missing one of the controllers. No, it's missing. Okay, cool. Now we have both controllers. I don't know what was happening before, but like yeah. So move the right one, that moves the moves the sun. Move the left one, that moves the sun. If I move around, that moves the sun. And anything else, or moving anything else won't move anything, as it probably because we didn't code anything up to do that. But cool, we should be good to go. And at this point, now we get to have a little fun, <laughs> and let's just uh. Toss in some rockets, toss in some spawning, and yeah, that that's that's pretty much all it is. And now I mean, you basically have a very simple dodging rocket simulation. It's kind of kind of weird. I, like I said, kind of came together <laughs> last minute, but um, hey, at least we have something. <laughs> so let's go ahead get the rocket. I took the gray one you can take whatever you want um, and then I took rocket 2 that's what I used before but you you can see here you have a ton of different rockets to choose from um, god I don't even know who made this but like they, they did a nice job really well done um, I am going to on the FBX actually just mark the scale factor here as 0.25 because um, otherwise these rockets are gigantic and you can see right now, once I do that, it shrinks in all the dimensions by 0.25. Um, you could also uh, have applied it on the scale here. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, at least for our purposes, anyways. And yeah, so we got this. I'm going to now go ahead and add the particle effect in. To do that, we're going to go to uh, effects example. No, not this. Yeah, no, that, that was it. Uh, the effects example, there should be water weapon. Where's the flamethrower? Flame. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm going to just drag that guy in. So we're going to just use the flamethrower that's part of this. It's this guy. So <laughs> you can see it works as a flamethrower, but we can also use it as a uh, jet propulsion <laughs> engine. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to take the flame, drop that under the rocket, and delete our flamethrower. We don't need it anymore. And add, move this to 0, 0, 0. So now it's coming off the side, but we can, uh, that's just because the rotation set to 90. I'm just going to set that back down to 0. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a long tail, so I'm going to also update the the lifetime and the size of it. So for that, what I'm going to do is set the lifetime down to like 0.25 to 1. And then obviously you can <laughs> see it's still ginormous from doing that. So we also have to set the start size to point, uh, 0.75, I think. It's even, even now it's still a bit long, so we can do like maybe 0.75, uh, 0.5. Yeah, that looks a bit more reasonable. Let's also move it up a little bit so that it's coming from inside the the rocket. And now we have basically a rocket that we can use. Um, nothing terribly fancy here. It's just a matter of just setting it up. So I'm going to go ahead and make a prefab out of this guy. I'm actually on the prefab. I'm just going to set this to 0, 0, 0. Um, and then delete the rocket here. 
So now once we do that, I can go ahead and create a spawn spawn rocket um, spawn rocket script. Hit reload. There we go. And create public game object. Yeah, I'm just gonna do game object rocket prefab. Hit save on that. And I'm going to, for simplicity, um, I don't know if many people know this, but you can actually change uh, start to return I enumerator, which I think is just a kind of cool little feature. And we're just going to say while instead of, and the, the difference here is creating your own coroutine versus a um, saying start, uh, start coroutine. It doesn't, uh, performance wise, doesn't do anything. Um, but you get this nice little effect. Uh, once we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, first I'm going to create a position. So let's call this uh, new vector three. I'm just going to be random for now. Dot range. I really don't like that. It does random range here as the default. I really want it to default to range. I think that's one whenever it gets deprecated out. Uh, in the X, I'm going to just say negative 10F to 10F. Um, in the Y, I want to keep it always spawning above us. So this is going to be something like 2 to 8. Pick your own numbers, really. It doesn't really matter. And Z is negative 10 to 10. So some, somewhat like far away. Could be also close by. Um, that's kind of what random range is going to let us do. So now we have a position, and now I'm going to go ahead and instantiate it. So instantiate our rocket prefab at the position we just randomly generated, and with a quaternion identity. And we'll update the rotation in just a little bit, um, but this is just kind of the basics. And the last thing, and this one's kind of important, so yield return new wait for, so you have the options between wait per second and wait for seconds real time. Now, I'm. It, it's kind of, I think, a little, once you see real time, it's kind of obvious what, which does what, but real time is like, it waits two seconds without time scaling or anything like that, and then spawns something. The wait for seconds just waits two seconds multiplied by your time scale, uh, or one over time scale. So for example, if I, if I told it to Wait, if I want it to happen in two seconds no matter what, I would choose real time. If I wanted to, based on the movements that I make and the changes to the time scale, so for example, if I'm moving, if I'm not moving at all and it's still that 0.01, um, then it would spawn after two seconds multiplied by 100, so 200 seconds. It's kind of a big difference and um, that's okay. So, but I do actually think for super hot, it makes sense to do wait for seconds as opposed to real time. Otherwise, you get a lot of things spawning really quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say just two seconds. Um, well, obviously, if, if you move really fast, that speeds everything up. But if you don't move, it slows everything down. And yeah, so that's that's all set up. The last thing we really need to do um, to make this kind of more of like a dodging-esque type of thing is just add a rocket rocket script on there. This is the last really easy thing we need to do. So everything in here is going to be physics-based, so I'm going to change our update to fixed update. So this is whenever you want to apply physics. I'm going to create a rigid body R. I'm lousy with naming stuff. <laughs> um, and then r equals get component. Well, we'll need to add a rigid body and collider in just a second, but I'm just going to write this as if assuming we had it. And I'm actually going to also just say require component type of rigid body. So that just makes sure that we have that rigid body. And really, the only thing here we have to do is just set a velocity. So um, I'm going to be lazy <laughs> and going to get our game object via script. This is not the right way to do it, but I'm going to do it anyways because I can. So camera equals game object dot find 
this is basically finding it by name in our scene. This is going to be, let's just copy the exact name here. So it's going to find the head. <laughs> and like I said, you wouldn't do this. You would use some sort of like singleton programming or uh, have a reference of some kind that you set. But if you are doing prototyping, this is actually a pretty good way to do it. And then we just need to set the velocity. So velocity equals camera dot transform dot position. So that's where we want it to go. This is where we are currently. And I'm going to multiply it by, uh, or sorry, and then normalize it, and then multiply it by some value. I picked this, not 20, 30. Some value between 20 and 30. Um, I think it's meters per second. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the exact value is. Um, it's some arbitrary unit, whatever whatever unit he decides to use. I think it's meters per second, but I could be wrong about that. So that's the velocity. Um, that's great. Um, so actually, now if we hey, go in here and set our rocket spawn, let's just set this up to test real fast, and then we'll we'll add in. We'll we'll see a problem, and then we'll fix it. Because that, that is generally a good way of coding in the first place. Rocket spawn. So I'm going to go here, set the rocket spawn. I'm going to drag our prefab in. I'm also going to hook up our rocket script. It attaches the rigid body, which is great. I'm going to add a mesh collider, make it convex. And I'm going to disable gravity because we're in zero gravity, as supposedly. Or, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could actually set the gravity, but it doesn't really matter too much. And, yeah, so there it is. Oh, where's, where's the headset? I need to speed up time a little bit. You can see it's moving a little slowly. Oh, wait, this is... That spawn with a null reference at 15. 15. It did not... What? Which part? Which part did you fail at? I'm assuming it's probably it failed at finding our camera. Um, camera not find by camera head. Yeah, this is why I said don't don't do it, and I did it anyways, and it's gonna cause us bugs. <laughs> um. Oh. Okay. Fine. I'm not gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it an even hackier way. But I know this one will work. <laughs> is uh camera.main.gameobject. Um, this is, if you have it, so your camera rig is already tagged with this, but if, if you tag it with a main camera, um, it'll find your main camera and you can access it statically through that. Um, again, hacky, but it works. And yeah, so that one, you can see it's, it's headed toward us. One thing I don't like, and we are, we're going to fix this, is uh, we got to you gotta make it look in the direction of our where the rocket's going. Otherwise, it looks just kind of cheesy. But it, it, it at least is headed towards the player, which I like. So for this, get the velocity equals r dot velocity, and we are going to say um, so that's the direction we want to look in. So we're gonna say uh, quaternion dot look at transform dot position plus velocity so this basically says um, I have a puck to, to explain this with so I have, a, I have a rocket it's flying it has its own position it knows its velocity so it's let's go to the vector of the position and then add the velocity direction and now tell it to look straight at it and uh, for this all we have to do is actually just say transform, if I could, again, if autocomplete would like to, to work with me a little bit, <laughs> that would be nice. Transform.rotation equals quaternion.lookat. And the reason we're in fixed update is because we want the, velo or we're, we're getting the velocity, and I'm actually going to set this also uh, ever so slightly to be um, in, uh, where is it? We'll change this actually in a bit, but um, we, we want to set the velocity 
to be this guy. So this is actually going to make it move to where wherever you are, um, regardless of like what where you started. Um, kind of makes it a little harder to dodge, but it's still dodgeable, which is the kind of cool part. And velocity dot magnitude. So we're just going to go ahead and just tweak your velocity ever so slightly based on um, where you are, where, where you move. So it's kind of following you, but then you have to dodge at the last second type of style. So that'll, that, that should work. Um, and then the other thing I do want to actually incorporate is um, once it passes you, now this is the problem, is it's going to oscillate back and forth once we add this line. And actually I'll show it. That is probably, it's better to show and not explain. But uh, once it gets to you, it's going to oscillate back and forth. So oh, I need controller, or headset. So you see uh, <laughs> right now it's just kind of oscillating inside my head. And whenever it spawns another one, um, we should see that also. It should spawn another one. Where did, where's... That's <laughs> that is a particle effect that is uh, affected by, by this. So that's a problem. But what we will do is just we can we can do a really simple check to fix that. And that's actually just... We're going to uh, say this is curdist is uh, wherever our head is minus the position of the rocket. Once we subtract the two, we can then say is the current distance um, is the magnitude of that greater than or less than 0.5f. Just for example, you can you can use whatever point five f or whatever you want um, as your as your distance check. It doesn't really matter. But um, if if it's less than point five f, I'm actually gonna set a bool. So private bool um, uh, close to player um, is false by default on our rocket. But whenever it gets close enough, we're just going to set this to true. And um, I'm actually just going to copy paste this right in here because we already did the calculation. And if it is, if we're not close to the player, then I'm going to set the uh, the velocity um, to basically go to that player. And once it, once you pass it then we're not going to set the velocity anymore. So now, we shouldn't have that issue. Oh, and we're like, why not time? So now it just flies by once you, once you hit, and that's fantastic. I can, I'm just gonna keep shaking him left and right to make sure another rocket spawns. Come on, yeah, there it is, okay, cool. So you can get multiple rockets spawning. You're gonna use, no! <laughs> All of the objects I'm seeing right now, you got, you guys are going to see them once we're done here, which we're pretty close to done. <laughs> um, but yeah, in an hour, we got the rocket spawning. They're going past us. You can dodge them left and right, just kind of like you saw at the beginning. And uh, it's kind of pointed in the right direction. Are you finding more objects back behind the green screen? I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been doing a lousy job of checking the chat. I hope the sun. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. And in that case, um, I think it's time to. Wait, if I'm the green screen right now, that's like I'm like the voice of God. Then. Like I'm well, just. Like, well, you are always like, the voice of God, regardless. I'm like in space, you know. Uh. What's the song? Yeah. Can we just go through the steps of adding it to Yoria? Sure. Um, I was I was planning on doing that after the stream, but we can do it or or not after the stream. Uh, after we play a game, oh, sure, sure. Um, but then yes, we can do that. Because <laughs> um, I wanted to show there's. Do you know Je Joe Raddick? Yeah, yeah. Um, he built I think as like a hackathon project. And I'm gonna play it right now. Um, he built this game called Super Punch, <laughs> um, which is very similar to Super Hot, except it's time only. What did, what did he say? Time slows when you when your punch moves you. <laughs> so 
yeah, it's, it's a short game, but I figured we could play it and show you various other mechanics that you can use to slow time. Um, Hassan and I were playing it before, and I think it still has a little bit of work, so if Joe's watching this in the future or now, uh, he will hear a lot of complaining, but that's okay. I know he told me he was going to go back and fix this at some point. Um, but that's okay. Uh, where, did, where did I save this? And unfortunately, this is built in Unreal, so there's no mixed reality. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, maybe one, one day Unreal will get their stuff together. Same with Oculus. One day, Oculus, and <laughs> they will let me do mixed reality whenever I want to. Alright. Oh, and I guess this is an important point to point. So after the stream, I'm going to cut this part out just to make the tutorial seem a little smoother for people who watch afterwards. So, yeah. A magic cut is going to happen. Snap, and hopefully, yeah, I'll, I'll remember to cut to this point after the stream. And so no one has to, to watch me be exhausted. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Bye, tracker time. Bye, tracker yeah. time. We got the broom. The hammer. All right. I don't know if you want to do something else. Or... I, I, I feel like the hammer is a bad idea. <laughs> Just maybe. Um, yeah. All right. So let's, let's, let's add this guy. And so first thing I gotta do, and I'm yeah. gonna bring SteamVR over so that everyone can see it. So there are also assets for both of these on the asset store. Oh, for for models. Oh, for the for the hammer. If we want to try to add them in. Gotcha. Um. So I guess first thing, so the tracker comes with a USB, um, a, a wireless USB that you need to connect. We we've, we've added this in to the HMD. There's actually an extra USB slot. At the top, if I can open the thing, so right in there, it's this guy. So uh, you can get, an, I think. So Dario said, with the when, when you buy a Vive, like you get a USB cable that like reaches in, um, and then you can use that in case. So like for me, I I have my camera set up. I had a mixed reality camera set up. Uh, I have the Vive, and I ran out of USBs. So if you want an extra USB, then you have one here. Uh, next thing is, um, so this is what it looks like, and I think you guys saw it at the beginning of the stream. There's a button on the bottom here, which is what the, is that the HTC logo or the Vive logo? The Vive logo. logo. Alright, so if we press it, that blue light at the top, and I don't know how good that looks. Ah, it looks reasonable. So that blue light on the top hooks up, and... You might need to try pairing it. So, so it's here it says it's looking for Vive controllers. And if this doesn't work, we're just going to restart Steam or Steam VR because that seemed to work before. <laughs> and then hopefully, what you should see in Steam VR is the uh, an actual like puck looking thing. And it doesn't look like it's finding it. So what I'm going to do is close Steam VR. And we'll pair it first. So it's still it's still in development mode, right? For like the the puck and the SDK and all that stuff yeah, is. It's still a developer. It's still a developer the fact kit. We're selling is going to be. All right, so the it's. Consumer is going to be later this year. Cool. So yeah, so I guess. Man, the puck works. It's just it's a matter of getting it consumer ready. So there's still yeah. some steps. Um. All right. So I press. The puck. And should work. Should find it. It worked before the stream. Uh, let's try pairing it now, maybe. Device pair controller. It no, it's blue still. Now you gotta pair it again. Mm, so it says it's looking. Is there another button to like switch it? It's like before we had the uh, controller. Five. What's up? We need to pair it again. So I have, and if you want to come on, feel free. Sure. Um, so I have pair new controller, and then is it supposed to be flashing to go into pair mode, or like die? Yeah. I... yeah, it should be. Long press. Long press. You select the controller. No controller. Okay. So there we go. So then let's try retry. 
There you go. Yay! Awesome. And that should be it. We don't need to prepare anything else. And so, yeah. Green light on... And that does not look like a green light at all on the screen because I have a green screen set up. <laughs> um, but there's a light. You saw a light, and it's green. And now I'm going to set up the controllers just like normal. Turn on. Cool. We got, got controller set up. So now, so Dario has provided us with a Vive Tracker model, which I've downloaded already. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter. And actually, is there a way to pair or mirror from SteamVR? Uh, to see like what the compositor looks like? Sure. Uh, is it... Oh, display mirror. Display mirror, yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> that is what the... And then the puck falls. There we go. It's pretty durable. That's for sure. Uh, that is what the puck looked like. Is there a reason there's like a stick coming that's out just of it? The USB connector. Oh, got it. So that's that's the USB connector. Nice. So we could have, well we couldn't have done that before. <laughs> but yeah, if I if I wanted a wire coming out of the headset <laughs> into the tracker, <laughs> I could have done that. Um, that would be interesting. And yeah, so now. So what are we doing? Some steps in the chat. Of what to do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Then I can do that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna close that Vive tracker set up and you have the chat up apparently. I do have the chat up. Steps with SteamVR after creating your Vive tracker object. Actually, let me drag this in. Um, steps with SteamVR after creating your Vive tracker object with your model, add SteamVR tracked object .cs. in your camera egg, SteamVR controller manager. Make object size one. Drop your Vive tracker into element zero and add a collider. Cool. So, create an empty at zero, add a Steam VR, Steam VR tracked object. Dario, do you want to take these questions? Or do you want me After creating a model? model, and I'm also going to. I might as well get them straight from the source. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of makes sense, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to add the value tracker on here. We're going to add a mesh collider on here. Actually, we don't need to add the mesh. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the mesh collider. Uh, there's no reason to have the mesh collider on here. Um, so there's the puck in our space scene. And on the so we're, on the controller manager, set objects to 1. Yeah. And add... Vive tracker to element zero. So so the this guy yeah. here. Um, put a collider on it. <clears throat> Add um, a collider to okay. the tracker. Right. Yeah. Alrighty. Convex. Because convex optimizations are amazing. Did you ever take convex ops? No. <laughs> Did you take it? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's a brutal, brutal <laughs> it is. experience. That is what I've heard. Um, all right, so now magic. Where is it? Okay, there's the it's tracker. The yeah, it's the same view. It's being slow for yeah. what? Failed yeah. to create convex. Oh, I forgot to do. That's that would explain why <laughs> it's slow because it. What's up? I found it didn't solve the convex. So yeah. I just used it. Um, we um, should have taken convex optimization. <laughs> no, I, I know why it's slow. Um, come on. Come on. It's, it's not optimized that, op that model. <laughs> oh, I'm in play mode. That would explain why it's slow. <laughs> it's so slow. <laughs> and I'm assuming you run off of like a 1080 Ti <laughs> that just got unreleased. And it's still slow. All right. Any day now. Just gotta wait for this click to go through. Yeah, it's like. Oh, there we go. Sort of, kind of. It's yeah. still going. Half Believe. of it. <laughs> Believe. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna uh, just remove the convex for now. Excuse me. Hey, there we go. Um, is that right? Can I put the headset on. No, it's rotated. So we're gonna rotate it as well. Um, bye. 
Oh, it's already rotated 90 degrees, so we'll just remove that. And we'll actually just straight up 0, 0, 0 on that. And 15? That's crazy. 0. What? You can add up to 15 of these. Oh. It's, it's, it's the same max as track devices. Cool. So yeah. I think it's 15. Nice. 16. 0. So hopefully. Does that look right? Yeah, but someone was bringing up that the UI of that bottom right part with 15 trackers, does it just get <laughs> bigger? <laughs> what does that look like? Where'd you go? All right. Yeah, yeah, there we go. That is tracked perfectly. I mean, nice. And you made this? I, I used a, a model. Uh, we actually have a model to download from our website. Let me put the link. Oh, right, cool. Yeah. Oh, it's working? Yeah. Let me check All it out. Right. Yeah. See the fanciness? I want to put the broom on it. How do you put the broom on it? There's a... He has a... a, a oh, this is cool. Yeah. It's so light, too. Try throwing it up and catching it. I'll catch it if you fail. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard with the fire everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, because I'm still in the. You, you're the still in a uh, super hot. Yeah. I'm gonna speed everything up for you. And we we actually haven't hooked up the. Oh yeah, this shouldn't be doing anything, right? Yeah, that's not doing anything. But my head was. Yep. Yeah, YouTube's silly with that. Um, if you just like break up, and like with a space somewhere, I think it should work. That's pretty cool. Nice. All right, what do we want to do with this? We have options. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think putting it on the broom you want to do makes it? the most sense to me. What do you think, Dario? Oops. Start with a small object. <laughs> yeah, small object sounds like a good idea. Um, a hammer. That's <laughs> that sounds like a bad idea, just waiting to happen. Okay, we can do a soda can. All right, you have an empty easy. soda can? Yeah. I drank one in preparation. For <laughs> Boom. All right. Soda can. Busy product placement. <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Not yet, anyways. Uh, all right. So how do people normally, like, do they just tape it or do they, like, so screw it? That. Yeah. There's this thing. Oh. It's just pretty solid. Just all like, right. Um, so we can screw this onto here. All right, so we gotta. So that does that come with the tracker or dev kit? Yeah. Uh, this is something I brought, but uh, oh, okay. It's undetermined what will come with it. Sure. Uh, all right. So now we uh, we attach it sideways, and I'm gonna look. So <laughs> while we're while we're doing this, we should probably use a. Let me get a non-empty soda can. Why would you want it? I don't want to play with a non-empty soda can, or and then have it like it's, spill it's everywhere. It's gonna tip over. All right, we'll see. All right, so I'm going to get. We're gonna look for a soda can. That's what's gonna happen. I also picked this because we could easily just use a what is it, a cylinder? Oh, that's true. But but that's kind of there, lame. There's gotta be soda cans. What? I've actually used this. So do um. Uh, if you do so like a trash can litter or yeah. Tr uh, there's oil cans. There's a cannon tower. Or bottles, maybe. Maybe bottles, yeah. Worst case, I'll go on a different <laughs> gas bottle. <ball. laughs> <laughs> we want something that feels close. Trash. I think it's in there because I've here? used that one. Yeah. Uh, there's a like a. Is it? Oh no, it's a different one. Let's see. There's it one here. somewhere, but I don't remember what asset it is. All right, let me go on to TF3D, or something to that effect. Where did my chat go? Um, <laughs> uh, let's go on to TF3D. Let's get a soda can. Soda can. There's a Mountain Dew. There's a Cola and Takeaway Cup. <laughs> There's an empty... Okay, there we go. Let's use the empty soda tin. Ah, oh, no, I don't have Maya. Never mind. We're not using that. Um, I want an FBX. Pep no, I don't want a can red. 
That looks that looks solid. Nah, <sighs> that's CF three, CF Cinema forty. Mm. Where's the FBX? All right, we're using the Pepsi one because it is a Blender file, and I can use Blender. And Pepsi is also not sponsored. <laughs> Just to be absolutely clear, because you never know, <laughs> you never know what YouTube is going to do. <laughs> it's like, what? Product placement's crazy. Four, three, two, one. Cool. Get the zip, show and explore, extract with the weird name. And we're just going to drag in the Lotta file, which is an interesting name. Um, Lotta, there we go. Any day now, pretty please. Huh. I never understood why Unity sometimes just won't let you drag and drop things in. It's kind of weird. Um, in that case, I have to go to. All right, let's open, show, and explore. Go to assets and just drag. Oh, cause I'm I'm dumb. That's why. And I'm trying to drag it from the zip file. Uh, there we go. I think. Pretty please. Pretty please. It's in here. Why is it not refreshing? Oh, it's thinking. Oh, we'll let it keep thinking until it until it decides to to import in whatever. I don't know what. Why would it be called a lotta? Do you know? Lotta. Yeah. L a t a. I don't know. Let me check. Well, my computer is frozen. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you check while my computer is like trying to figure out what do I do with this Blender file. <laughs> there we go. I got it. I think. Well, all the stuff is in there. All right. Okay, that's big. That is really big. What? What is all of this nonsense? Why is all of this nonsense in my view? <laughs> Actually, no, better question. What is this? What am I looking at? All right, let me let me do this in a new scene. All right. Lotta. Ah, there we go. We have a giant room. That would explain what I was looking at. Okay, cool. In that case, I'm just going to drag... Yeah, I'm going to drag this and delete everything else. Just to get the can. But the can... What? The can looks transparent but we might be able to fix that once we get the textures in so this I'm gonna get textures drag those and I'm being really lazy with my my uh, dragging and dropping wait what why is why are the normals reversed okay let me fix the normals then um Let's go to calculate and apply. Hopefully that fixes it. Because it's kind of odd, odd to see that you have like broken normals. Yeah. Um, Did you click to yeah. redo them? <laughs> I think it's because it's like the, the encoding is eating up a lot of the bandwidth. So it's just like, I'm just going to be slow today. And that's fine. As long as it does its job and doesn't drop FPS, I'm okay with this. Yeah, if we need to, we can just do a cylinder shoot. Yeah. Not That's so game. lame. <laughs> yeah. But I guess if we have to, we have to. Alright, that... No, nope, it's still backwards. Alright, well, I would go into Blender and fix this, but I don't... That might take time, so we're just gonna use a cylinder for now. Alright, delete. Get that out of my space, and we... Have it in our open outer space. Examples, demo scene. Yeah, we're not going to save that. Cool. So let's on. So what I'm going to do for this is actually just create a quick script for copying the tracker. Let's call it copy tracker. Um, 
this is just I think a little easier or like more more flexible than um, more flexible than uh, parenting it under under Steam VR. So Steam VR tracked object um, puck. That is not where that goes. This is the puck. And for on update, we're just gonna say transform dot position equals uh, or sorry, uh, yes, no. puck dot transform dot position transform dot rotation equals puck dot transform dot rotation. Okay, cool. So that's position, that's rotation, and let's add a cylinder in here to do that. So 3D object cylinder it's going to be set to 000, zero, zero. and that is a giant cylinder i don't this is like a 1 meter <laughs> tall cylinder um, i think realistically we want maybe a tenth of a meter i don't actually know what would be a good number here i'm just kind of spitballing um yeah that works and then we'll just go ahead and copy that and then add our tracker. Cool. So now we should, in theory, well, I guess it's, it's sideways, but I, I just smell the apple side <laughs> emitting from this. Um, we are in play Tracking. mode. Maybe. What is that? Right. Um, Yes, so yes. The answer is yes, but I don't see the tracker. Oh, this is probably off. The can is on the floor. Okay, so you're on. Oh, so now it's... Okay, so this oh, is... So the, oh, the, the cylinder is not going to the tracker. It's at the okay. origin. It's still at the origin. And the yeah. rest. So there's the tracker. So there's the... Tr Wait, where is the tracker? Why? It's, so you see the tracker in there? Yep, it's it's like the track. It's tracking. I'm seeing you move it. The why? The, the cylinder is not moving to the, to it. Wait, that's interesting. <laughs> oh wait, oh it's because the other controllers are off. That's interesting. So it actually. So I think. Oh yeah. So it's now, right. so now it, it does, right? Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Well, I, I think the rotation's off, but, Dude, but still, <laughs> you could drink, you could drink soda well, I now. Where it's at, where the, the opening is. But... <laughs> it's happening. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's soda a off, but gets the point across for sure. <laughs> I think we just have to rotate it, um, and then it, that should do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I think we should call you the Smiler. Uh, what what are the other ideas for names for you? Voice of God came up. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of God, Hassan. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it a lot. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, we got it working. You, what what else can we do with this guy? Put can, on a broom. <laughs> <laughs> on different stuff. I mean, people have been kept chiming in with different things that you can do with it in the chat. So like right. putting, it, putting it on your foot for maybe like a kicking game. Um, I'm not to try. Okay, so I, I so kick the rockets away. Yeah, I mean, or if we just put put it on a, a foot and then um, just kick like it's just any object, you know, like even if it's just a geometry. All right, let's try it. I, I'm, I'm not going to do this in the super hot scene because I don't think it makes a lot of sense, but uh, let's try kicking a soccer ball. Let's see yeah. if we can juggle a soccer ball. Cool. Um, I'm gonna I'm just going to use a block. Yeah, I'm just going to use a block for, for this. Foot? For the foot? Yeah. And unless in unless someone sphere. in the chat has a good foot model I can use. I can look up shoes, but I think a block will be fine. Alright, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to do this basic style. Um, let's go plain. Let's go. Oh, I'm, I will use what we whatever we've set up so far. Uh, not here. Fast outer space. Uh, example. Uh, this guy. No, we will save the scene as soccer. No. Let's. All right. I, I don't actually know who we're gonna call this soccer. 
football because I don't know how many people here are from Europe and how many people are from the U.S. <laughs> Always a problem when you're when you're dealing with soccer. Uh, soccer football. I'm gonna copy the camera prefab with the tracker enabled. There we go. And that's just what whatever we set up there. And um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So then I'm just going to create another script. Wait, why is this in a weird... Oh, whatever. Uh, create folder. Uh, let's call this one... No, not a folder. I don't want a folder. Uh, I want to delete... Have you ever seen this view? I've, I've seen this view, but I don't remember how to get out of it. Which one? Uh, I guess the same as the asset view inside the project window. Mm. No, I usually keep one. it that No, way. I want it. Oh, I have it. I usually have it with like the big. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I, it's I like just this. A slide right there. Okay, oh, cool. I prefer the files. Do you like the icon? Well, because otherwise I just can't click an empty space, is my issue. Ah, yeah. Um, what was I calling this? Uh, physics. There we go. Physics copy. All right. So we're just going to make this super generic, but it'll work. So this, I'm just going to say public Steam VR tracked object uh, controller, and then we want uh, private rigid body R. We're going to set it in start R equals get component. So this is actually like bringing us back to the hollow ball uh, video, and then we just say R dot move position to controller dot transform dot position and then the same for rotation and I need to do this in fixed update that's a thing I always forget fixed update I don't know why actually I know why they do it but I don't like that they have to have two different <laughs> methods for applying physics um, okay cool so we have that and now I'm just gonna have three different models or three different cubes for each hand cube for each hand or oh, for hand okay. and yeah. hand foot um, rigid body and uh, physics copy and let's scale this to uh, be an appropriate looking <laughs> not appropriate looking but like or I guess it is appropriate depending on how you wanna <laughs> define appropriate but the point being it is appropriate for the hand <laughs> Um, okay, so position zero zero zero. Um, okay, I don't think that's the right size. Let me let me get the model real fast. What's up? There's a free ball pack on the asset store. We can use that. I'll I'll try it with the sphere first, but then yeah, we could add it in after. Um, and then because that's the easy thing to add in. The models is always. Uh, where's the control? It's a quick broom plug. Somebody's gonna make an application where you're like cleaning in VR, but <laughs> actually cleaning, like in the real world. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be VR's killer ass. Game, game of five short. Yeah. <laughs> game of five. <laughs> Dirt. Um. All right. So let's go ahead and. So it's actually this way, and it's a lot smaller. So, about well, yay, tall, this big, and I think that's about right-ish. Good enough. Good enough for a hand controller. So this is a hand. Let's uh, multiply this by three, and then we'll just apply tracked objects to... I think you can just put it on the ankle. Oh, nice ankle works. Good idea. You're, you're gonna you're gonna be our test dummy. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna do it. I can do it. Either way yeah, works. You haven't tried it, man. <laughs> I haven't tried. Well, it? none of us have tried it. <laughs> well, I just have a soda can. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, all right, so we've set it up for all three. Let's uh, let's make sure it works and it's tracked properly. And it's laggy. <laughs> I don't know why it's so laggy. Why is it laggy? Stop it. Light. Um. What's oh? That's a, it's more of an FPS thing. Mm -hmm. 
which is odd. <laughs> um, oh, it's because this is the collider is on here, so it's like detecting every collision. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So note to self: do not put collider on the tracker. Um, and so, where is the position of you? Oh, gravity is enabled. I was like, why is it like slowly sinking <laughs> into the abyss? <laughs> uh, get rid of gravity, get rid of drag, enable continuous dynamic collisions, and okay. There we go. Uh, we could probably rotate it if we wanted, but for now, I think that's fine. Let's, uh, let's hook me up. I feel like you might have to orient, or you might have to be like smart about like how you orient it. Yeah, for sure. Oh shoot, can you give me that? Is it? Um, soup. What does this feel like? Ah, that works. That actually works pretty well. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah, like about there. Swoop! I have, a, I have a little foot. <laughs> it already has a. Yeah, this this works. All right, time to play some soccer. Let's try. Let's just kind of drop in a. Uh, where's my mouse? Let's just drop in a soccer ball. We should be good to go. Yeah. Just give a ball. 3D sphere. Um, where's where did this? Oh no, mm, out there. Wait, what? Where is it? Let go. Oh, it's because I uh, <laughs> accidentally parented it. No, that's way too big. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me be like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Add a rigid body on this. Save it as a prefab too, so that you can, when you're trying it, I can just drop in. A oh. Bunch of them. Nice. Um, because we don't. <laughs> we could script it, but we don't want to. Um. All right. I think that should. No, let's try it. My uh, where'd it go? Haha, <laughs> nice success! All right, giving you another one. Yeah, drop it, drop it like kind of from like above. Okay, this is gonna be kind of tough. All right, I'm looking up. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? What is you going see on? It <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Or maybe turn off gravity. Yeah. Turn off gravity and move it up. Let me turn it off on the. Yeah, just right. turn it off on that guy and move it up. Um, All right, wait, wait, okay, wait a second. Where are you gonna kick? I'm like here. Like, move it to like where where my where the controllers are. Oh, okay, I see. Like above me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna try it a little. Yeah, yeah. Now move it up. All right. I just want to make sure I'm not gonna get whacked. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> wait, where are you going? <laughs> wait, why are you moving up there? You kicked it. I did. Yeah. <laughs> what? You Whoops. kicked it over there. <laughs> All right, another one. Another okay, okay. One. <laughs> oh, did you hit that one? All right, wait, wait. No, I'm pa I'm pausing I... it. I need to change this prefab really quick. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, gravity's off. All right. But it works. Okay, so there's that one for you to kick. Should already be like behind you or something. Yeah. Smack. Okay. <laughs> oh, that one didn't have gravity. Got it. What is it hitting? Uh, Alright, I'm bringing this one to you. Alright. I'm not gonna touch it. Is that uh, good? Yeah. Uh, Alright. Turn on gravity. Okay, wait, wait. Alright, ready? One, two, three. Oh no, I suck <laughs> at juggling! <laughs> 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 Alright, here's a bunch of them. That, that foot presence, though, it's, it's really lousy. It's, uh, it's actually like, kind of... It feels good. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh. No, come back. Come back. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 There's just lots of potential for asymmetrical games with this. But actually, it's like, 
Um, you've seen like the uh, some of the uh, the the full body trackers, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like you could like do something with that. It would be pretty cool. You got Mikey on stream. Whoop. Let's see. What can Whoop. we add to this? Get another vibe tracker. <laughs> 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 Except we're out of USBs. <laughs> that would be actually kind of cool though if you, if it wasn't USB and like you, you can just like auto auto pair it. Oh, you put it in ISO view, nice. Yeah, I needed to position it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, but it works. You want to try? Yeah, totally. Oh, you're kicking left leg. Yeah, that's rough. Dude, I played soccer. You have to do both. <laughs> or just not play soccer. <laughs> or or play soccer. Alright. Get you set up. I'm gonna restart this just so that uh you don't have to see all of the mess that's that's there right now. <laughs> and then you can go ham. Rough. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. <laughs> you have a foot, right? Yeah. It's right behind you, I think. Um, there's another one. <laughs> Swoop. Up, oh, me hit it. Yeah, um, my. I think the arm colliders were hitting stuff. We could probably oh psh, I and then I hit it. <laughs> all right, I'm, I want to try the juggling thing. All right, all right. Um, I don't, how am I gonna do this? Um, just like there, move it up a little bit. Tell me when it's like. Is that... uh, bring it a little closer to me. All right, okay. All right, I'm gonna move it up a little so you have some time. Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's like wow. <laughs> <laughs> we would need to put um, like physics materials on it. Oh it's yeah, bouncy. we could do that. There's just yeah, there's a lot there's of potential like here. Tons of stuff that we could do with it. <laughs> there's tons of st yeah. What else? What else is in the chat that they want to see? We got like 20 minutes left. Can hmm. I say some words? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. So uh, I put a little tip on there. Uh, I think earlier you may have noticed that uh, it was confusing controllers with the trackers. Yeah. So in the chat, I, I added a tip to, to tell you what how to do a check. So you check, okay. you check the class type. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So generic tracker would be this. generic tracker is this, and then yeah. those are hand controllers, uh, or whatever, they, whatever, or whatever that yeah. one, and then the head is something else. Yes. Assuming. Okay. Cool. So you got to do that. I think we'll we'll need to add that to uh, okay the can... controller manager. <laughs> um, oh, like in inside this guy. Yeah, uh, Got it. in the chat, I'll sh I show you the, the, the actual uh, constant we have to check for. Cool. Uh, we have an upcoming uh, update to the uh, Vive Software Input Utility okay. plugin. Nice. Uh, it's going to support trackers. <laughs> that's, um, that's always a good so, thing. So we have this script called Vive Role, and it, okay. it basically does the same thing that uh, Sync Control Manager it does. It supports managing the device IDs, okay. but it's a, lot, a little cleaner and that provides static APIs. Got it. And we've introduced uh, several enums for one device role that maps pretty much like Steam, where we have hand roll and we have a uh, tracker roll. So Got it. You'll it, be able to manage all the trackers separately. Not worry about managing it. It's managed, it's managed for you. So cool. <laughs> look for that very soon, hopefully in a week or two. Nice. Um, so I have a question. How are people approaching prototyping around these trackers? So. Like to me, in a dream world, it seems like you would have some modular, like real life things that you could just build up, sort of like Legos or something like that. Have you seen anybody working on stuff like that? Because I mean, even here today, we had to like look around what stuff do we actually have. So, what are your thoughts on that? Um, what are my thoughts? My, my thoughts initially is people could carry these trackers with them to a, a VR party. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, if most games uh, support it, even if you don't have a tracker, you just have, have it in the in, in your build. Mm -hmm. Much like uh, mixed realities in your, in your yeah. build, you don't even realize it. Yep. Just add that in your build to that and have a collider. So in any game, you can actually come <laughs> in and actually uh, uh, 
help the player or to be disruptive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, so, I, so I did that recently with the, you know, Blarp, the game. Yep. There's a, uh, I, ha I have a, a build of that with the tracker, <laughs> uh, which actually I have here if you want to try it. Oh, awesome. Um, and it's just funny in a party mode. You can have co-op or asymmetric. Like oh, or nice. Yeah, nice. Um, so I have a build, uh, so you can see the tracker mm, in the game, set that up. and you can actually help the person yeah. or make it harder for that player. That's pretty cool. Definitely, yeah, I mean, that affects how you would design the game, too. I mean, adding it into existing games is fun. Yeah, but and then I, it I opens think most, up so most of the things we're going to discover that's going to be a good use case, we're not going to be able to do it until we get the tracker in our hands and actually start playing with it. Sure. Um, um, I have a question, but I will set that up after, uh, or once we once is this we have the this modded floor? I yeah. think so. Um, let me get mixed reality set up also because we can. Shout out to Kabibo. Who yeah, yeah Kabibo. He's so, awesome. <laughs> go to the Steam Store and get this game. You haven't yet? Uh, yeah, we did a stream on it, and it's also open source, which I think is just so cool yeah, of him to do. Used. Um, and then where did I set the mixed reality file? Probably in my downloads. Um. Next reality configurator, copy this guy into here. Cool. Um, no, into here. Alrighty. I'll turn this up. That's in mixed reality, so we're just going to switch. Sort of, kind of. I feel like that's a little wrong, but. Oh, I don't have my. Lol. Well, it's fine. Uh, we're not going to do it in mixed reality mode. That's probably the easier thing to do, because <laughs> I, I took out the extra controller. <laughs> All right, set that up, and that is so trippy. <laughs> cool. So let's see how this works. So I have this. I see the vibe tracker there, and I'm going to. I forget, oh wait, where where are you? Nice. Okay. So I see that, and so I'm assuming one of you guys is holding that. So what happens if I like... But which of us? Oh. <laughs> uh, I think Daria? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you play, or how, how would you join in? So I see the controller, and I think I see it also. I feel like this would also work a lot better with mixed reality, but... Derp! <laughs> So how how, do, how does that controller join in? Well, the more controls you have, uh, that's when it, that's when I can come in and help. <laughs> okay. Have a lot of them. Okay, come on. Let me get. Let me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just want. I, some... just, I just point at it and like yeah. throw the trigger. <laughs> no. Let me, let me, so you let me do start it like a it. swinging yeah. mechanic. <laughs> yeah, I do. That's it so a weird. Why? <laughs> um. Because like that's it, it makes it so that it doesn't hit your controller that easily. That's true. Yeah. It's like it, it like goes around your controller as opposed to like through it. Ooh. Except it makes it like significantly harder to control. Come on. I have those guys. All right, we're getting slightly bigger. Nope. Does your tracker block the? Yeah, it's got a divider. Oh, really? No. Nice. Ooh. Nice. Oh yeah, it, it interacted with it. I saw that. So like, you can use it to like. Yeah, well, I, ideally yeah. we would have a, a different camera so that you could do the asymmetric thing. Yeah, yeah it would be easier for me. To <laughs> <do that. laughs> um, but stored it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, if it wasn't mixed reality, that would be a lot easier. <laughs> That's for sure. Woo! We're getting bigger. I think I forget what my high score is. But like, there's like so many crazy shader effects that are going on. I feel like I totally just hit you. <laughs> hit it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh,
<laughs> Dario is doing so much dodge. <laughs> As he sh oh, no, I lost. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I, I'd imagine it's kind of hard to see in 2D mode, but uh, nice. Yeah, that sort of works. I mean, I think it needs to be probably integrated a little more into the gameplay. Yeah. But uh, for like a fast prototype, I'm, I'm imagining probably built that in a few hours. But well, I mean, we could definitely. Like, we could already this. think of like prototypes, things that we could come up with using the tracker, like mm -hmm. asymmetrical games. Like, there's tons of stuff that you could do with it. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, as far as, so obviously, I don't, I can't imagine a hundred percent of the Vive user base is going to have one of these trackers. So as, I guess, as for developers, who who know, like everyone has the Vive. And ev not everyone has this. It's, I, I mean, it's just a common question with peripherals. Like, what, and like the Vive pool is already small. Like, what makes sense to develop for? Or is it like to think of this more like this optional thing, kind of like in Blarp, where the core gameplay doesn't right, right. need it's it? It's just a simple example, but I, I, yeah. do, I do want more gamers to, to start thinking, much like I mentioned with Mixed, mixed Reality, you have that yeah. support there, then everyone's going to do Mixed Reality. Sure. Um, yeah. Same, same deal. If you can just add that support in there. Just add it. Um, so I mean, eventually, I'm assuming it just comes kind of part of that pre the, the camera with prefab. Or um, you can just drag. Yeah, or drag and drop it in. Um, okay, like so, like for me personally, like I would obviously use the, like this. I think is a great mixed reality tool as opposed to like oh, having yeah, a random yeah. set of controllers. Using controller it setup. In the camera, for yeah, you. exactly. Yeah. Um, but then there's like the gameplay issue. I'm like. I think, like me as a developer, when I see this, I think it makes total sense in an arcade setting where you know yes, someone is going to have one of these right. things. But like in a consumer setting, it's a little hard. Like, I mean, I guess we all, we'll have to see like when these can kind of come out and what's the percentage of the population that actually has a vibe and uses this. Right. Um, but then I think, based on that percentage, it might may or may not make sense for like a lot of the developers here who are like building for. Or like building Steam VR games, but right. like whether or not they include it, um, I think would be interesting. Um, you probably don't know this, and <laughs> you probably don't have the answer to this. But would this? So I know the LG headset came out to support lighthouses. Would this work with that? Um, as like just like the USB dongle like this? Uh, like I guess it generic enough. I would see why not. Like for for instance, our our Vive input uh, plugin. Yeah. I mean, you can just use it with the Oculus as well, right? Yeah. So Steam VR, it's the common platform. Yeah. Moving on. So that's Okay. Well then so there Steam you VR. have that. So yeah, yes, like yes. Steam VR is supposed <laughs> to be generic enough to work with everything, yeah. so that includes this. Okay. Cool. I mean that hopefully when all these other infinite many <laughs> headsets come out, <laughs> um we'll we'll have I guess yeah, you guys are working do you guys work with the Kronos group? I uh, talked to them during yeah, yeah, so did I. <laughs> Step forward till you're on the Oh yeah, camera. it's just like oh just ever so slightly out of the field of view. Um yeah, I mean I'm assuming they will definitely want this in there. Yeah. I was a bit confused by what they were offering. I guess it was more of like group membership and everyone collaborates together as like independent developers. Um but yeah, it didn't look like there was an SDK per se. It was more just like a here's like the standards for like developing. Right. Which yeah. Roadmap, that's all. Yeah, um, which is useful. Um, just, I guess, not as practical as Team VR. <laughs> it's just like, hey, drag prefab, it works. Ta da! <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, are there any questions in the chat? Uh, not really. People are just kind of talking about different applications or different haptic. Oh, does this have haptics? Stuff. No, but it's got a, I forgot to, I forgot to mention the hardware possibilities with. With the, uh, the pin, IO pin. So in the developer guide that's online, you can get all the information of how to hook up your own circuitry to these pins. What's the link? Oh, yeah, let's show that to make sure they can see it on there. Yeah. I mean, I'll also put it in the, the description. What you could hack. So, yeah, so one of these pins. It's a uh, developer. So it's a haptic sensor. Uh, okay, so you can build your own. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, developer vibe. In fact, you can, you can map most of these to all the controller. Buttons. So you can make your own controller out of this tracker. Yeah. Nice. Um, I I also wanted to get my hands on the 
the tracker hardware kit. Yes. The one with the little sensors that you can put on, um, massage however you want. Um, we'll do a stream on that, I think, in the future whenever I get my hands on it. But uh, that sounds like a right. lot of fun also. So if you're in the maker community, it's like, yeah. another toy to play. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Um, Gosh, I love that everything is so extensible. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it this one? No. Uh -huh. Uh, what's the link to it? I put it in the chat. Okay. I just copy paste it. Let me find it. Uh, the spaces because. Uh, yeah, I know it's YouTube. Why? Uh, this is why I want to get the chat working event. This one? No. Developer guide. Is it above this? Oh, I missed it. Lower. Lower. Oh, you can just Google a vibe tracker guideline and find it. Vibe tracker guideline. Okay. This one. Nice. Pogo pin pad. <laughs> it's a fun name. Um, so we go over use cases. Um, you can mix your own proprietary. Protocols, wireless protocols as well. So, cool. Have you guys heard of Art Unity? Art? Like an, an R D R. I don't know how you would pronounce this. Art Unity. It's like a plugin. Arduino. Or, yeah, like Arduino. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I would I would imagine once we get that hardware kit, that's how you would hook yeah. everything up and extend it even further. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. It's a reconnection successful. It was down for like a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Too much bandwidth. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I, and even though I'm also Unity certified, I was last six. Yeah, you know Unity certified. Whatever that means. I really, I really, we should do a shout out to our Epic friends at Epic. Yeah. Unreal. Uh, we should, we should really maybe have a session how to start with. Um. Yeah. So Abdov is our 3D artist, and he's also he uses Unreal. He likes Unreal. I don't. <laughs> um. He is, so I think, hopefully, I need to talk with him a bit more, but like, I think the plan is to give an Unreal video, at least on their VR template, next week, and then kind of extend from there. Cool. Uh, so hopefully a lot of more Unreal stuff in the future, because they're, they're both doing crazy, crazy work to make it ac accessible for VR development. Um, so if you don't want to code, Unreal is probably better. If you want to, coding, I think it's a lot faster, and if you do know how to do it, it just makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for Unreal, so it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> just a little more time. Just a little more time. Um, yeah, awesome. And there's a, there's so much information in here. Do you write this? No, or? our team in Taiwan. Taiwan, oh, nice. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, quick question for the people in the chat for whatever time we have left. Like, people yeah. should just think of like what are cool asymmetrical experiences that you could have because i mean we tried to we did actually do a stream mm -hmm. on that before um but having trackers i mean really opens up the box in terms of the interactions that you can do so come up with ideas post them there and we can prototype stuff out yeah i i definitely kind of like in blarp uh i think the one other addition you'd want is the pc view needs to be a isometric view down onto the down onto the game mm -hmm. um and then it would have made it a lot more accessible for dario to actually like walk yeah, around yeah. and actually use it but um other than that i think it's there there are definitely use cases for sure yeah. there are uh, so many and i mean it's just cool to try to think about you know if you think from the frame of how would you make a really fun party game? Or if you had a bunch of friends over and you wanted yeah. three or four people to be able to play together, maybe even like five or six, ten, like how would you do that? It's yeah. cool to think about. I definitely think, especially in China, arcades are going to be a thing. Um, or I guess it's, uh, what, what are they called? Uh, it's their internet cafes. I was totally blanking out on the name. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a thing. I think arcades are also popping up around here. Uh, slowly. <laughs> I, I know there's uh, the void in New York, which is just like. Oh, there's I want. now like three of them in New York. What? Yes. Why are there no <laughs> voids in here in Silicon Valley? Oh, void, but... well, I mean, but yeah, but it's like the experience. Yeah. It's like there's more space here. <laughs> it's like yeah. you could definitely put a big void section. Uh -huh. We'll fly to New York. Well, we're gonna 
So when we get Edson, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whenever that happens, uh, fingers crossed, uh, we have to go to New York anyway. So we will we will check that out. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, we're making it happen. <laughs> we're going to check it out because it's something I want to see for sure. Yeah. Um. Cool. So we're getting yeah. close to 12 o'clock here. We can, uh, if there's any... I'm gonna pull up the chat because I, I didn't do this last time and I really wanted to. I, I think it's so cool they just kind of like uh, pull up the chat here, have it like archived as part of the video. Uh, I see the ghoster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Must Pro, a lot of love for that. Check it out again, it's free now. Yeah, we'll do a video on it for sure. Um, we started talking about some Unity coffee tables. Alex Sink, thanks for pointing out that there are Unity branded coffee tables. <laughs> 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 something you know you need to know they might be a giveaway maybe like a future event you never know <laughs> oh harry potter um like using the broom nice. for a harry potter game of yes Quidditch. get the fire bolts in there go go yeah. flying through yes i love it <laughs> um nice nice my browser <laughs> the browser fails yeah we tried punching so joe raddick and his team yeah. Awesome prototype. There. It was just Joe. It's not even his team. Oh, okay. That's the crazy part. Uh, we're guessing five. Do, do, do. Yeah. You got to wrap up GDC strong with more awesome news, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I wish the can hadn't had the normals flipped. Yeah. It, it still sucked. felt really cool, though. Well, the thing is, is that the I think a bigger problem was that it wasn't, we didn't have a sign of the orientation. So I had yeah. to make sure I knew where the, the lip was to drink from. <laughs> Remote twister. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can dig it. Just bleh, 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 bleh. Um, 360 VR. I need to keep your shields up to bounce off. Oh. What Ooh. was that? You have yeah. like a 360 video with like audio, like audio shield type of mm -hmm. style. And like you can get everyone with vibe trackers in, punching stuff. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it, Alex. <laughs> um, Awesome. Um, we'll stick around in the chat for a couple more minutes, however long YouTube can, keeps the chat open. Again, another thing I find annoying about it. Yeah. Um, eventually, I think we'll get the uh, website resolved. But in the meantime, we got we to gotta deal with YouTube live chat. Uh, yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up. Oh, I forgot to mention we're still in the SVVR space, and I want to keep giving a shout-out to them. Yeah, totally. I, totally, yeah. I totally blanked in the beginning, so it's going to happen at the end. Great. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that pretty much does it. So, what's your nickname? The Voice of God. Hassan. <laughs> the Voice of God. <laughs> We're still finding the. <laughs> the Voice of God. And this is Fuse Man, and I'm signing out. I'll see you. See you guys later.